Prisma 6.6 just landed and it's a big release. It's got a ton of great new features that make it possible to do things like work with ES modules, make it easier to work with AI in tools like Cursor and Windsurf, and also be able to work with Cloudflare and Terso more easily. So today let's take a look at some of these new features and how we can incorporate them into our workflows. To get started, let's go to an MP project and just do MPX Prisma init. We're going to see a new change here. If we run init, what we'll get is our Prisma directory like we always do. And something that's new here is support for a new client generator. So you probably typically always use the Prisma client JS generator. There's a new one called Prisma client like this. And the idea here with this new generator is that it's more flexible and it allows us to work with ES modules as well. Before we see an example with it though, let's actually just use the old generator. So Prisma client JS, just like we're always used to. We're going to take out this output path. We'll talk about that in a second as well. So let's just have a standard client with a provider which uses Prisma client JS. Then maybe just a simple model, a user model, that's fine for now. And let's go ahead and generate the client so that we see the typical behavior that we're used to. All right, so over in the terminal, npx prisma generate. When we do that, we can go into node modules, into the .prisma directory, and that's where we see all of the artifacts that are generated based on our schema here. So then the first thing that we can talk about is this part that we just removed, this output path here, and that was set to generated slash Prisma. That's the first thing that we'll wanna pay attention to. So if we use that, if we've got that set, instead of having all of those artifacts go into node modules, they're going to go into that custom path that we defined. So let's generate again. So now we've got that generated directory. It's got all of those artifacts there. And so why would we want to even put them into a custom output path instead of having them just reside in node modules? Well, there's a lot of reasons. One of them might be, let's say we're working in a mono repo context. If we are using a database package across many different apps in our mono repo and or many different places across that mono repo, we're going to run into issues if we have everything in a single node modules directory under the database package. If we're trying to use things that are generated by Prisma, but they only reside in that node modules package, then other modules and other apps aren't going to be able to resolve them. Instead, if we put everything in a custom directory and just have everything live there, it's much easier for the mono repo to be able to resolve everything out. Okay, so that's the custom output, but that's not actually what's new here. What's new is if we go ahead and remove that dash JS from the end and we go and generate again, we're going to see something different. Let's just remove this generated directory. So we start with a clean slate. We'll do MPX Prisma generate again. And now what we get if we go into generate it is instead of that whole big list of artifacts, we've got just a couple things, client.ts, index.ts. So we're not dealing with JavaScript files in here anymore. We're not dealing with those files that are .d.ts, those type files. Instead, everything is just here in these TypeScript files. And so now, like the rest of our application where our build step would package up all of our TypeScript files, the same thing will be true for everything that is generated here. Now, the last thing that's new here on this new generator, of course, is support for ES modules. This is a long requested feature. It's finally here. We can do module formats like this, and we can say ESM. That's going to give us ES module support. If we need to stick with common JS, we can do so with CJS like that. But many of us will want to go for ESM. We can generate our client using that. Everything is going to generate and be just fine using ES modules across the rest of the application. All right, so let's look to another new feature that is going to be really great for people using Cloudflare D1 or Terso. And that is that we now have the ability to modify those databases using things like DB Push or Prisma Migrate. So how it worked before in previous versions of the ORM is we could read from those databases, but we couldn't make changes the same way that we would with migrations, let's say, against a Postgres database. So let's take the example of Cloudflare D1. It's a database that's based on SQLite, very flexible, gets close to our users, and is a really powerful database in general. Previously, we couldn't make changes through things like migrations or DB push, but now we can. So let's see an example of that. The key here is that we need to work with the new Prisma config file. So I've got one prepared here. It is pulling in Prisma D1 HTTP from the adapter for D1 that we've got. We've got some environment variables that will need to be set. We'll take a look at how to set those up against Cloudflare in just a minute. And then we've got this migrate step here in the config definition. It's defining this adapter, which uses Prisma's D1 HTTP adapter, and then passing the credentials that we need to. Okay, so let's see this at work. Over here in Cloudflare, I'm in the D1 area. We can create a new database. We'll give it a name, Prisma Test perhaps, or maybe something like Prisma Test, like that. Create it. 
All right, the database was successfully created. We get this UUID here, which points to our database. Let's copy that. Then over in the environment file, we can put that into the Cloudflare database ID. That's what goes there. I've got my account ID set up there as well. The last thing we'll need here is a D1 token, an API token. So let's go over to Cloudflare and we'll see where to do that. I'm going to open a new tab here and we'll go straight to where we configure our API tokens. It's in the profile area here. I've already got one in place that was from my use before. Let's create a new one just to see the flow. We get a list of things that we can go and create a token for, but what we need to do is create a custom token. So down here, let's get started. The token name can be whatever. I'm gonna call this Prisma. The permissions here can just be account like default. We'll need D1 from here. So let's grab that D1 and then we'll need to select edit. All right, so that should be good. Let's go ahead and create it. I'll copy this token, come back over to the project and put that into my D1 token spot. So as it stands, there's nothing in this database. If we go back over here and we take a look at tables, there won't be any tables here. And previously there was no way for us to be able to create a table using Prisma. We could create a table here and then maybe read from it, but let's see how we can actually use the adapter now to create a table. So we've got our schema, schema.prisma. Let's switch over to SQLite just there. I'll swap out my environment pointing to database URL with a typical file with dev.db. We've got our user model here. Let's go ahead now in the terminal and we'll do npx prisma db push. All right, so we've pushed and we have generated our client. What we can see up here is that we are loading the config. So Prisma has done the work of going into our prisma.config.ts file defined in the root here. And of course, because we are setting up our adapter here in the migrate step, we have pushed to Cloudflare. So let's go check that out. If we refresh here, what we see now is that user table that was just created via the push. Now there is also a whole workflow for how you would use Prisma migrations if you're using the Wrangler CLI against a D1 database. That's all in the Prisma documentation, which is linked below. And it's well laid out there how you would go ahead and use the Wrangler CLI with D1 and get the full migration story using Prisma. Now, the last thing we'll take a look at today is a way to get some modeling done as we initialize our database using AI. So we're big fans of AI. We love all the possibilities that are there for working with AI in a database. And what we've got now is the ability for you to pass a prompt to your init step so that you can get some custom modeling done right out of the gate. To see that, let's get rid of the Prisma directory. We'll get rid of generated as well. And what we'll do is come down here to the terminal and pass npx prisma init. Then let's pass this flag, vibe. So if you're a fan of vibe coding, this is right up your alley. And let's say a simple bookkeeping application. Prisma is going to go ahead and initialize a database, a Prisma Postgres database for us. We'll choose the region, give it a project name. So that is all done. Our database has been created. We have got our Prisma directory with a schema. And let's take a look at what we've got in our schema. We've got a user model, we've got an account model, and a bunch of other things as well. These were all put into place for us thanks to that prompt that we put in when we initialized our database. We've got a budget model, things like reports, report type, so of course, while this isn't the exact shape of the model that we'll need in our actual application, we get a lot of work done for us and the ability for us to be able to get some ideas from these models, to be able to extend them from what's here. And ultimately, if you're somebody that likes vibe coding and embracing exponentials, this might be right up your alley. All right, so that's it for today for the 6.6 .6 release. There are more features though in the release. You can check them out over on our GitHub. So github.com slash Prisma slash Prisma, and you'll get yourself over to the 6.6 .6 release notes where you can check out everything else that is great in this release. So if you enjoyed this video and like this update, we'd love if you'd subscribe to the channel and we'll get you more great Prisma content as it comes. We'd also love for you to join the conversation on Discord. We'll link that in the comments below. You can also reach out to us. We're at Prisma on Twitter or Prisma.io on the web. Thanks for watching.